Welcome. It's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 7th day of April, 2022. Great to have, have everyone here and topics that I've got on the agenda. News, using Crowd in Enterprise for localization. Alex, you and I spent some time on that. Uh, we had a question from Elizabeth on sponsored internships. And then we've started the She Code Africa Contributhon, and there are some topics about docs that I'd like to go over here and have invited a number of people to attend. Uh, right now we've got, uh, we've got peace with us, and I'm hoping that others will join as we proceed with the call. Any other topics that we need to add to the agenda? Alex, any topics that you need to add beyond what are noted here? Okay, uh, welcome Elizabeth. We've got a topic for sponsored internships on the agenda. I assume that that's good enough. Are there others that you need to discuss we need to bring today? Uh, you're muted, Elizabeth. Sorry, good evening. None from my um, end for now, none from my end for now. Okay, great. All right, so then I'd propose let's take these topics in, in order and let's go ahead. We'll add more topics if, the time, if time allows and we need them. So we released a new version of Jenkins on Wednesday. It's a long-term support release. Uh, it'll be about a month before the next long-term support release. And thanks very much to everyone involved. Change log and upgrade guide are linked there. Next topic then, using crowd in enterprise. So Alex, how, are, how is it going and, and what should our next step be, et cetera? Yeah, I think we have set up the platform label of plugin very well. I think you didn't encounter more issues with that, did you? No, no, no. Well, so no issues, no issues for me at all. It it worked. I was able to integrate the changes. Uh, I think we did have the action still to decide if if we want to approve something today. Right? Is that because I had seen a pull request and had approved it, merged it. I have not released the latest pull request, but had released an earlier one. So I've still got an Italian translation that's not yet approved, one small piece. And it looks like all the German are approved, so they've been merged as far as I know. Is that as correct as far as you understand, Alex? Yes, that's fine. I think okay. this week or last week, I translated the last strings and approved them earlier this week. And I think you already delivered this PR. Okay, so, and we can see that here in the pull request. So there is... Let's see, it would show it as me actually being the committer, right? New translations. Here we go. Yeah, that's you. Actually, me, but that's you. <laughs> right, right. The, the misleading thing there is because it's using my credentials, it is, submits the pull request as me, even though it's your work. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so, so for me, that feels like um, Italian still needs to be approved. And that's a task that I know how to do. Alex, what do you recommend for next steps? So I could use it in more plugins. That I think I understand how to do, or we could at least try it. Are there, we could demonstrate it in an online meetup. We could propose wider adoption by email. What, what do you recommend next? Uh, I think that would be more something for an online meetup because writing it out in, a, um, in the email group, Google thing, would be a bit tedious and likely doesn't bring that much attention to it that I would like to have on it. Good, okay, I like that. And online meetups, and it's been a while since we had one. So this is a great excuse to host one, okay. Yeah, I think we could do some demonstration to sum up what we did in the docs office sessions on the online meetup to roughly go over crowding from a user perspective and leave out the technical aspect like how the oh. integration in the Jenkins CI organization would work. Right. Okay, so, so now in terms of how do we, so I've, you've taken me through very, very patiently getting this registered. If, if there were 20 or 30 plug-in maintainers who wanted to do this or Jenkins or even eventually Jenkins core, would we need to have them be tutored by you as well? Or is there some more general purpose thing we should be doing? I mean, Crowdin itself has a tour and a guide. If you have noticed that 
on the initial login. But I think it would also be better that I, maybe with you, can guide people through it. So people have someone to talk to if they have questions instead of relying on the documentation. Might make things easier to understand and to get used to. Good, okay. All right. Now let's, let's, I've got an example group. Would it be worth, I've got an example group of a bunch of people who helped with French translations during Hacktoberfest 2021. That might be a, a good excuse for, hey, let's gather them together, possibly even for a, 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 a meetup, get someone from that group to join the English language meetup, and then maybe they host one in French language of the, on their own. Yeah, for example. Okay. All right, so an online meetup, would you be okay if I propose that? Um, and put you as the primary presenter with me as an additional presenter and we'll do it together? Yeah, that would work out. Great, all right. Okay, so that I can do. Uh, now, in terms of, of the how does the experience work? Would we continue using intellectual sites or would we go to a different location? How would, how would the experience be for the Jenkins project in, as we get larger and larger? Uh, intellectual sites is my personal crowded enterprise organization. I mean, I, I don't mind having a few Jenkins projects here, but in the long run, it doesn't make much sense having them on my instance just to carry them over on the Jenkins CI instance. Okay. So, if you would want to do that, we could request an open source license from Cardinal Enterprise and use that for further demonstration purposes. And that would be, I hope, likely the solution we would use in the long run. Okay, good. So we request an open source license and then, and that would then, they then host, they would host something like, okay, so you have intellectual sites.crowdin.com. This might be jenkins.crowdin.com or something else.crowdin.com. Yeah, for Are example. They... But Crowdin Enterprise supports CNAME records, so we could easily point it to somewhere else. Oh, it's just okay. the base domain. Ah, okay. So, so conceptually, it could actually, they would still host it, but it could be translations.jenkins.io or something yeah. like that, or crowdin.jenkins.io. For example, yeah. Ah, okay, good. All right. I don't know when you want to when you want to set set the online meetup up, but maybe we could request the license before and have a demonstration thing right in Jenkins. I think that would be the better approach instead of relying on my instance all mm, day long. Good. All right. So so if we if we better if we get the open source license, uh, then establish the the uh, site and use that in the demonstration yeah i think doing the online meetup we could integrate one of your plugins or reintegrate the design library that has fairly easy translation strings right on the jenkins ci or jenkins crowd in instance well and, and design library is a great choice because we've got a very obvious place weekly.ci.jenkins.io to show it to people yeah, and it's using continuous delivery. So every time something merges, a new plugin, a new plugin is released. So we get very fast, fast iteration on the translation strings. Yeah. Good. Okay. That might might justify us begging Tim Jacome to include Tim in the demo so that he could so that he could do the merge and we could show live. Yes, here's the merge. Oh, and here it is released and congratulations. Now it will be available on weekly.ci in 24 hours, something yeah. like that. Just one note on the open source license. Last time I had to request one, I had to do it as organization administrator. So it would be likely someone, it has to be someone from the governance board, I guess. Which happens to be me. So that's a good, yeah. good thing. 
Okay, so organization, and and certainly it's a that's a conversation for me and the board to have, right? They they may have other requirements for open source licenses. They may say you must be this or that, and and we have to evaluate if we meet their criteria. Yeah, Good. I've taken, it, I've taken a look over it. I think we meet the criteria quite well. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, Alex, that's thank you very much for that. I think I am going to go ahead and add some more plugins as my time allows, just because I want some more experience with it. But I'll, I'll propose the online meetup. And if by next week I haven't proposed it, we'll talk about it in Doc's office hours to remind me. All right. And let's assume, I'm going to assume um, four to six weeks from now, let's, let's say four plus weeks from now, because I'm, I'm busy with other things right now and it's gonna be a little tough to get all the things organized yeah, for the some, final date. Certainly some time to set up our Jenkins instance. So I think four or six weeks are fine. Okay, great. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Any other topics on this one before we go on to other topics on the agenda? Not from my side. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth, next topic was sponsored internships. And I'm sorry that I'm not able to help with them at this time. I just don't have the capacity. I've looked at it. I don't think it's a financial thing as much as it is my capacity to submit the proposals and manage them. That's fine, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, my wealth. And thank you for asking. Thank you very much. And thank you for the the, the boot camps that you're running and the, the you're seeking for internships. That's really wonderful. Thank you, Mark. Okay, next topic was, and it looks like we've got Catherine and and we've got oh, dear, dear, dear. Catherine and Peace are both here. So so that's that's at least two. Let's talk to SheCode Africa Contributhon then for a few moments. So the SheCode Africa Contributhon has started. Started April 5. And we've got project plan links here on community.jenkins.io. There are three projects we're running, inclusive naming. And let's see, Peace, you are assigned to which of those? Sorry, I've got to look. Inclusive naming. Oh, good. So you and you and Catherine are both assigned to inclusive naming. Very good. Okay, so we can focus our conversation today on that project. Very good. Excellent. Oh, and it's right here. I should have read down below. Here we go. Peace and Catherine are both on the inclusive naming project. Very good. All right. So, so what we've what we've got there. What we wanted to do today is meet one another, introduce each other, say hello, and then talk about startup activities to get ready to do that. And for inclusive naming, I think what we could talk about is, oops, now my fingers, how to divide, oh, how to divide the work, the work between the participants so that you don't trample on each other as you're doing, doing research. And I'll talk about some ideas there. So I've got some startup ideas. And then I think the most crucial one is how to divide the work. Would that be okay for you, Peace, and for you, Catherine? Yes, it's true. Yeah, that would be okay. Okay, great. Well, so then let's, let's have you introduce yourselves and uh, so, Peace, why don't you go first? Tell us something about yourself. <laughs> I would have loved Catherine to go first because her name starts with C. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry, name... I'm not very good at alphabetical sorting. It's, it's <laughs> obvious. All right. My name is Peace Okafo. I'm in Nigeria. And um, I'm actually a technical writer who loves coding. I love everything about coding and I'm, I aim to learn more about coding, documentation and test API testing. 
And I also, I also want to know more about contributing to open source. That was why I um, start, that, that was why I applied for the contributor and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Peace, and delighted to have you here and lots, lots to do. Catherine, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Catherine Hiro, uh, currently based in Nairobi, Kenya, and um, I'm glad to be here. I, I, I'm looking forward to join Contribution, and uh, I'm currently a content developer, a technical writer, and a front-end developer and a technical writer. I think you've written content developer. Um, yeah, so uh, I joined Contribution because I've been curious about open source. And I figured since I already have skills in technical writing, then learning about documentation would be a great, um, would be a great way to start contributing to open source projects. So I'm looking forward to learning a lot. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. So the inclusive, let's let what I'd say let's take next is let's look at some of the start act, uh, startup activities that Peace and Catherine will both need to do as part of getting started and getting ready to help with inclusive naming. The inclusive naming project is trying to, to replace less inclusive terminology in the Jenkins project's strings and software and documentation like master, slave, whitelist, blacklist, uh, with more inclusive terminology, controller, agents, uh, include lists, deny lists, those kind of things. So, so it's, a, it's a hybrid of software and writing. And the hybrid nature of it makes it interesting because we need the help to make those changes. And part of the help is finding where to make those changes and checking that the changes make sense and are workable. So all of them have certain startup activities. One is, for instance, you need to download Jenkins and download Java 11, and then use Java 11 to start your own local copy of Jenkins. This runs on, it works on Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Uh, it runs on hardware that's as small as it, it actually can run on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a little bit constrained memory-wise on a Raspberry Pi, but, but certainly on a Windows computer with two or four gigabytes of memory, it should be just great. You'll use that to get some initial experience. You could do tutorials. You could try your own experiments. The idea is just become familiar with it. Then you stop it. And when you need to run it, you start it again the same way. And it will remember what you did. Another part that you need to do is you need to create yourself a GitHub account and please record it in this spreadsheet under the GitHub, GitHub ID column because the GitHub ID column helps me know how to identify you when you're on GitHub. So add it here and you may have to add it as a comment. I don't know if, given, if I've given you right permission to it. So just be sure that you've, you've added that. When you've got your GitHub account, then you need to create a gitpod.io account. And the reason for this is that many times, okay, and we have to note that it was last year's experience that taught us this. Um, we use gitpod.io because some frequently contributors don't have a big enough machine to do documentation writing on their own computer. You could ask Zinab, who's with us right now, about her experience two years ago in Google Season of Docs when we gave her the impossible task of running, running on a Windows computer with very small, small space. And it turned out it just didn't work well for her. She had all sorts of heroic efforts she had to do. Didn't you, Zinab? Yeah, that's, that's very correct, Mark. <clears throat> um, I had to. It was a lot. I had to 
um, install a virtual machine on my PC to be able to run Jenkins, but I had to install Ubuntu. I was trying to use, um, I think it was WSL or something, but I was having issues. So, so many issues just kept popping up. I just had to opt for a VM, an Ubuntu VM, and that was how I was able to run it. But GitHub right. is, is, is really, really great, like compared to all that stress. Because <clears throat> for me, I was able to set up GitHub in, I think, less than 10 to 15 minutes. It's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You don't have to get out of your browser. You can operate the IDE from your browser. You don't have to install anything on your PC, as far as I know, while I was setting it up. So compared to my experience two years ago, this is so much better. Thank you. Thanks very much. And there is a link here to a video tutorial on how to do that. It's actually documentation office hours from earlier this year where John Mark Mason showed people how to do it. So you'll, you can go watch this video, follow the steps that are in this video, and it will have you configured and running, able to see that. And if you have questions, ask them on Slack. We're happy to answer questions. Okay, so we've got those three, three steps, download and run Jenkins, create a GitHub account, and create a gitpod.io account that Catherine and, and Peace both need to do. Then the next topic is this one. This is one where I wanna actually consult with you, Catherine, and with you, Peace, to see would this idea that I've got of how to do it be workable for you? So, so this is the part where we sort of start asking, I, I need to ask you some questions and offer some ideas. So what I was thinking of doing is, Mark, create a spreadsheet of Jenkins core and plugins, and then we'll sort by number of plugin installations. And then each person, so Peace and Catherine, enter their name next to a plugin when they are starting on that plugin. And then you clone that plugin, you clone that the source code of that plugin. Then what you'll do is search for problem strings in HTML, replace them because HTML is just text, text files, um, jelly, and it's mostly replace them, Java, and there it's more like sometimes replace them. And this is where you'll have to, you'll have an experience of working through what it means to deal with each of these kinds of strings. And we'll take you through those. And after you've searched for one, you may submit a pull request, commit them and submit a pull request. Now, when we get to Jelly, it's, huh, it's more complicated because you have to compile them, test them, commit them, and pull request. Now that's an awful lot of detail for welcome first step 101, for, for the very first step. Peace and Catherine, are you okay with the idea of using a spreadsheet to it helps separate who does what. Yeah, I think that's that's a great idea. And if anything comes up uh, later, I think we'd, we'd be able to make changes as we start. But I think that this plan already works for starters. So Good. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. So, Peace, what about you? Do you think that will be okay for you? 
Oh, we just lost peace. Okay, so we'll have to check with peace later. Zina, based on your experience, does that seem like a workable process or is there something that we should, we should adjust there? Um, no, I think it actually works. It, it works. The only thing is um, for them to remember to keep updating the sheet so that there is no conflict. Because if you start working on a plugin and you don't update the sheet, someone else can pick it up. So it's very, very important. While it's really good, it could get really messy if people are not um, updating it. <clears throat> Good, good point. Yes, very good. Um, so just to add on what Zainab has said, maybe we could agree on um, a number of plugins we can start working on. Then we assign the person who is going to work on them um, before we start so that there's mm. no conflict as we proceed. Yes. That's, a, that's a good idea pre-assign an initial set of plugins yeah. to to each person right and say okay you yeah. take these you take these and when you've run out of those when you're finished with those then you could start putting your name yourself that's a very good idea i like that okay that makes sense yeah so that's something i could do i did that i did that last year and it, it didn't seem harmful when I did it. So let's, I think that's worth trying. Good. Okay. Any other recommendations? Okay. For so now, for me, that's it. Um, great. Anything comes up, I can always send you a message on Slack. Thank you. All right. And peace is, does this seem to you like it will be okay that creating a spreadsheet of Jenkins core and plugins, and then having, having the two of you assigned to rows of that spreadsheet so that you'd be assigned a set of plugins, would that be okay with you? Yes, I think it's okay with me. Great, okay. Now, now one of the risks here is, and it's, it's part of the challenge of open source, is there's no promise that we'll get reviews of the pull requests. We have to ask for them, right? So and and we'll do that. So it's it's just part of the nature of open source that we will submit pull requests. We intend for them to be valuable and usable. And, but we can't guarantee that they will be merged. That's, we'll keep working on it. I certainly will attempt to use my influence to persuade people to maintain them or to, to merge them and to review them. And we'll do that as best we can. So that, that feels like a good process. Then the next piece for me, I think would be planning how we're going to meet regularly to be sure we get you started successfully and, and which pieces will work well for you. So since the people we've got here today are related to inclusive naming, is would Monday afternoon your time be okay? Or would, is, is late evening better for you? What, what times of work? what times work better? I assume you've got regular jobs and so you're probably not available during your working day. So do you want, is evening okay your time or is there, there another time? Evening works for me. Okay, so for evening, Catherine, yeah, evening is okay. Great. And peace, how about you? Well, I feel evening is okay. This. By this time, the time we started today, it's okay. Ah, good, all right. So this gives us, so start time of Doc's office hours was okay for you. Good, all right. That's very good because that, that avoids most of my meetings during the day by being at this time. So, so Catherine, if we were to meet at this time on Monday or on Tuesday, would that be workable for you? 
Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And and peace. Same question for you. Would that be okay? Yes, it's real. Great. All right. So let's just plan that. I will. I will set the calendar agenda calendar item. Mark to schedule the calendar item. Um, and with you, both of your permission, I will send you an invitation to your Gmail account from that calendar item. That means though that your Gmail email address will be visible or may be visible in the calendar. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yes, okay I have. Okay, Mark, invite both to the meeting. Okay, great. And I would also like to invite our project manager to the meeting. That is, oh dear, I have to get Nafisat Jimo. Um, she may not be able to attend, but I'm going to invite her anyway because she'll be helping me assure that we do these things successfully. Great, we will plan for that then. Thank you. Yeah, if you are also going to be working on spreadsheet, I think it would be great for her to be involved in that process, probably doing some work on the spreadsheet and monitoring it, monitoring the progress on there. Exactly, that's what I was thinking as well, uh, Zinab, is that, is that that's something where we can have her help she can also help us with seeing how the data is going. We may have her do things like track which pull requests have been submitted and how they're, how they're progressing just because that way we let Peace and Catherine focus on doing the work and Nafisat can worry about tracking and how, how are we progressing. Yeah, exactly. Great. All right. That covered all the topics that I wanted to deal with on the inclusive naming project. I'll send those invites. Uh, I've got to meet separately with Nafisat about uh, the project manager because tomorrow we want to do a blog post. Uh, so Peace and Catherine, I think I've got both of your pictures correct. Is that right? Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull in the slide deck. I think I've got it here. Where did I put that slide deck? I just wanted to have one more chance for you to tell me, yes, it's okay. Okay, ah, here we go. Social media covers this one. So here is the image I've got. Uh, Gmo, Gmo's, oh dear, I got that backwards, don't I? Isn't, that's her first name? Oh, I'll have to check with her. So Catherine, you're okay with your photo? Yeah, and I'm okay peace, you're okay with yours? Yes, I'm okay. Great, thank you. All yeah, right. Yeah, um, Mark, I wanted to read something with you. Mir I don't know if Miracle reached out to you. She dropped out. She said she had to drop out of the program due to an emergency she had at home or something. Oh, so oh, okay, thank you. No, I wasn't aware of that. But knowing that she has to drop out, I'll just take her off the list then if that's yeah. okay. Yes. Great. All right, done. Thank you. That may let me have a better better layout as well. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I think we covered the topics that I wanted today. Any any other topics we need to go over? Um so I just wanted to ask a question. Um, I remember um, we spoke about, or oh, I think I raised some time ago about bi-weekly sessions we want to be having, um, where we want to address different topics. So I was wondering if you'd be open to speaking at one of the sessions about GitHub, because I know you're a pro at GitHub, maybe give some tips on how they can use GitHub to contribute to their various projects. It's not going to be for just um, Jenkins contributors, but contributors um, within all the organizations. So, yeah. Sure, sure, I'd be happy to do that. You let me know. So, and I apologize for my poor, poor 
linguistic skills. Mm -hmm. Does biweekly mean two times a week or two every weeks. two weeks? Um, every two weeks. Okay, thank you. So I, I admit it, I'm an English speaker, but I never remember which of those it is. So that's every two weeks, right? Yes. Alex, no grinning at that comment. That's that's cheating. That's totally cheating. I'm not Alex is a, is a German speaker and he knows it better than I do, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm correct so also, no, but it. I know that what I'm trying to say is um, every two weeks. I'm not okay. 100% sure I'm also correct. <laughs> Okay, so I would be happy to talk about GitHub and do a question and answer session. Absolutely happy to talk about using GitHub to contribute to open source. Yes, so um, the first session is supposed to happen on the 23rd of this month. It's on a Saturday. Okay. <clears throat> so we're thinking of doing it, say sometime around the evening, of Saturday, um, that's evening Nigerian time. So I don't know if that will work for you. It will, <clears throat> that would be, that. let me after, double check my calendar, but you said the 21st? Evening, 23rd. 23rd, okay. So 23rd on my personal yeah. calendar is open. That would be fine. Okay, so Saturday. Afternoon or evening. Saturday, yeah. April 23rd. Uh, mm. evening Nigeria time, yeah, Africa time, okay? Mm. Africa's too big a place, Nigeria time. Okay, great. Mm. All right. Yeah, so I would, I would propose to talk about the web user interface and okay. the command line because those are the two things that I've found very helpful. And here we'll talk about pull requests and templates. And, and then, uh, reviewing changes and CI job checks and continuous integration jobs. Yeah, I can talk about those. All right, thank you. I'm just going to come back to this note later and take out this content and just use it to create something before then. Mm -hmm. Sure, you bet. All right, thank you. Great. Let's see, what are some other things like that? Forking a repository. Oh, oh yeah, those kinds of things. Great, updating a repository. Great. All right. Any other topics we should discuss today? None from me. Okay. Uh, one point with the license. Uh, oops. Yeah. Um, would you request one or bring it up in the next governance meeting? Yeah, yes, I've, I'll start the question even before that. So I will oh, okay. start an email thread with the governance board after I've, after I've uh, checked their terms and conditions. So yeah. if the license terms are easy, then uh, meaning I, I see nothing that causes me any red flag, I'll just ask the, the board for permission. Yeah, I think it's like 10 or 12 bullet points. Nothing yeah. major. And possibly give grant me manager access on it. That would make the demonstration much easier. If that would be possible, that would be quite nice. That makes, I think that makes good, very good sense. Uh, that makes very, very good sense since I think you're the most experienced person we have on it. Great, okay. Anything else on the crowd in topic, Alex? No, I think we got everything covered here. Okay, so Zinab, you may have missed the, the early part. Uh, Alex has taken us through a way of doing translation into other languages much, much easier than we've done it before. Uh, so for people who speak French or in Alex's case, German, or in my case, some limited Italian, uh, we can we can do the translation process into those other languages much easier, thanks to open source donations from this company, Crowd in Enterprise, that provides tools to do this. So, all right, I think we're done for today. Then a, a copy of the recording will be placed on community.jenkins.io within the next 24 to 48 hours. Thanks everyone for being part of the session. Thank Talk you. to you on Monday, Elizabeth, and Thank peace. You. See you then. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Bye -bye.